Ah, hello, so this is the video 2 for sequential function charts, uh, the international norm for graph set. And uh, I'm going to speak uh, about how to select a sequence in part 1. Then point 2, I'm going to speak about the mutual, mutual exclusion among, among sequences. Then how to provide priority uh, among sequences. And finally, one example. So the first question is, what is a sequence? A sequence is, a se is as the name says, states, is a, a sequence of steps and transitions. So we got step three, then the transition four, and so on. So we got you can have several actions associated with the steps. So uh, considering this example here, where we got an initial step one, which is active. What are the evolution possibilities in, in this case, in this diagram? So it depends of the transition conditions. So the, because the transition one and transition two are both enabled at this uh, instant. So if you got, got a situation where A is true and B is false, uh, so transition one is going to be cleared and this uh, token passes to step two. So in this case, the uh, selection of the sequence one was uh, done. But if you have the other situation, uh, okay, where you still have step one active, and then in this case, you just have B equals to one. So in this case, uh, the transition two is going to be cleared, and uh, the token is going to pass to step three. And the sequence two, uh, selected. So we got yet another possibility where we we have simultaneously a equals to one and b equals to one. In this case, uh, both uh, transitions are going to be cleared at the same time, and we got uh, uh, a token. The token leaves this uh, initial step, and we got the token in two and in three. So this is a different situation where the selection was, we selected both of them, so we got a kind of uh, parallelism, parallelism between the two sequences. So how can we ensure that the evolution proceeds just in one sequence? That's the question. So we want to exclude the possibility of evolution when A equals to 1 and B equals to 1 at the same time. So this is possible if you had to, for, if you make the, the, the transition condition in the, case, in the first case, we change from A and we add this part and not B. And to the other one, we had to this and not A. So it means that when A is equal, is equal to 1, this is equal to 0, and this transition is false. And the same happens, the vice versa, with this one. When B equals to 1, this is going to be 0 and false. So it means that when A and B are, e are both true, uh, none of the transitions are, is going to be uh, cleared. So, um, of course, if we got more than two sequences, one, two, and three, in this case, we got more possibilities. In this case, for instance, if R1 is equal to 1 and R2 is equal to 0 and R3 is equal to 0, if this, is, this step is active, this is going to be uh, clear, and uh, so we got the token here. So, the selection is for sequence one. It could be for just sequence two, which is this, this, this possibility. For three, and then we can we have another situation. Now, in this case, we got the selection. If R1 is equal to, to one, and R2 is equal to one, and RT is equal to zero, it means that the, in this situation, this is, is equal to one, and this is equal to one, and this is zero, so we uh, have a token file, and so the the clear of, of transition of this transition, this it means that we got the, 
uh, step four and five activated. So it is this is a kind of a parallelism between uh, the parallel evolution of two sequences, one and two. So you can uh, analyze all the possibilities, which is in this case were are seven different possibilities. Okay, where we can have a selection or uh, of one or more than one uh, sequences. So this, is, if you want to make them uh, mutual exclusive, exclusive in this case, so we have to add to uh, all the others. Uh, so if we got R1 here, we have to have the negation, the R2 and R3 uh, uh, in the neg negated. So this is the way to ex mutually, mutually exclude all the sequences. Okay. Uh, but uh, another possibility is how to make sure that, uh, how to guarantee that uh, we got um, priority to one uh, sequence. For instance, if this is equal to one, and this, if this is equal to one, but I want to give priorities to sequence one, then I can do the AND with not A. And in this case, when A is equal to one, not a is equal to zero, and so this force this and force this one to be zero, and this one is going so the token is going to pass to step two. And uh, so this sequence in this case got priority to be uh, activated in, in the case of a conflict between this and this. Um, so um, we are going to see now um, uh, one example that is in a graph set plus. This is example two, which is interpreted interpre parallelism. Uh, we got uh, a division here between interpreter and structure parallelism. This one is called interpreter because it depends on the interpretation of the of the transi trans trans transition conditions. And I'm going to just to go to to a graph set. As you can see here, this is the example. Ah, but first, I'm going to explain you uh, what is the, the example. The example is this one. So we got a trolley C, which is initially in the position A. We got uh, here um, a sensor, which is active when the car is in this position. This is the initial position and the resting position. So when uh, this uh, button P1 is pressed, it means that the car is going to, to do is going to move from A to B and from B to, to A. This is the, the cycle. When P2 is uh, activated, it means that the car has to move from A position to C and back again to A. Okay, we got here a, a kind of uh, uh, we have to move this uh, needle from this point to that point in the, ca in the case uh, if the car moves from point A to point B, actuating this uh, V. So this is the, the problem. And um, uh, so this is the, the representation of the inputs and outputs. It is important to understand that you got uh, P1, P2, are the inputs, then we got the three sensors A, B, and C. We can activate the motor from to the right and to the left, and also the this uh, I call it needle to this V. Okay. So this is the solution to a graph set. So uh, initially we got uh, step one activated. So this means that uh, the car C uh, rests in, a, in the position A, rests in, in the position A, so it is in, in this position. Uh, so we got uh, here a selection. So we got one sequence is going to control the car to do the cycle A to B and B to A, and we got another cycle, another sequence controlling the car from A to C and to C to A. So if P1 is uh, activated, it means that, uh, that we got a step here that is going to 
activate the motor to the right, D, and also is going to put this uh, needle in the in the in the position pointing to B. So when when the car the car is going to do this, it reaches the B position. When it reaches the B position, this is true. In the then in it passes to step three. It inverses the, the motor direction to E, to, to the left, and it continues to activate V. So the car now is going to do this inversion until it reaches the A position. When it reaches the A position, it returns to the initial step. So the same happens with P2, but we assume that this was in correct position, so that we don't need to activate V in that, uh, in that uh, uh, case, the, we we may ask, okay, but if uh, if if P1 and P2 are activated at the same time, what happens? So in that case, we can either either have a mutual exclusion between P1 and P2, or give priority to one of the sequences. Okay, so now I'm going to show you here in the simulation so, okay so this is a little bit different because here we we have not continuous uh, continuous action for v but it's a, a store action or memorized action so but this is the same it it remains uh, you can the, you can uh, it will work with the same uh, representation of continuous actions as uh, as then so the just to see if i press p1 you can see that it is going to do this cycle and return to the, to the initial position. So we can do that and then press it and uh, move it frame, frame by frame. So in this case, as you can see, it's going to to reach the B. When they reach the B, it inverts the motor to the left by switching on this E, which is output here. And then, uh, as you can see, uh, is going to to move again back to the um, to the same position. If I press P2, it is going to do the the movement to C and then back again. And if I press P1 and P2 at the same time, uh, this is just to show you that uh, in this case we got a mutual exclusion, so nothing will happen. Okay, see because they when one is true. The other is true as, as, as well, so this it will not work. Okay, we got the same problem here, but giving priority to to uh, move to the sequence one. So if in this case, if I press P1 and P2, this is the one I'm going to move the card to the B and then from the A position again. Okay, so it's the same thing with priority. Okay. You can try, try this and with uh, with different uh, different ways. Okay, and with this, I'm going to conclude this video. Thank you for watching.